Hi, my name is Heather Smith, and this is my book, The Boy, the Cloud, and the Very Tall Tale, published by Orca Book Publishers. This book is set in Newfoundland in the 1920s, and it's about a boy who is on a search. He's looking for his missing father. I'm going to read a scene um, today, and um, in this scene, we meet a very important character. His name is Mr. So-and-so, and he owns a notion shop which sells sewing supplies. Uh, Ewan's grandfather is a tailor and he brings Ewan to the shop along with Ewan's little sister, Flora. Um, and in this scene, we meet Mr. So-and-so. Ewan looked in amazement at the hundreds of pull-out drawers in the cabinets. No wonder Grumple preferred this place over the mercantile. Mr. So-and-so must have thousands of notions. Further in and along the back wall, there was a long counter behind which they expected to see Mr. So-and-so. Well, said Ewan, where is he? Suddenly, there was a loud thud against the window. Jesus, Murphy, cried Grumple. There, plastered head to toe against the pane, was a man Ewan could only assume was Mr. So-and-so. Looking a bit like a dazed bird with his face squished against the glass, Mr. So-and-so managed a small wave before pointing to the window latch. Flora ran to open it. A second later, the shop owner tumbled rather ungracefully into the room. Help him, cried Grumple, but there was really no need. Mr. So-and-so broke his own fall with an expertly executed side roll. While he sprang to his feet with the nimbleness of an Olympic gymnast, in appearance, he couldn't be further from one. Wearing a cream-colored fisherman's sweater and a navy wool sailor beanie, he looked like he'd be more comfortable captaining a fishing vessel and balancing on a high beam. Mr. So-and-so dusted himself off and grinned at Grumble. Well, I'll be, if it isn't. He stalled like this for a good few seconds before breaking off with, nope, I got nothing. Grumple graciously filled in the blanks. Alfie Pettigrew. Alfalfa Getty Prue, said Mr. So-and-so, of course. Grumple seemed amused by the flippant mispronunciation of his name, but it annoyed Ewan greatly. Flora, on the other hand, was neither amused nor annoyed. The look on her face was one of pure wonder. Are you a fisherman, she asked. Mr. So-and-so caressed the arm of his sweater. Nah, I just wear what's comfortable, you know what I mean? Flora caressed the trim of her overall pockets. Yes, she said, I know what you mean. Mr. So-and-so put his hand out for a handshake. But when Flora took it, he kept both her hands still. Shaking is terribly undignified, he said. It is, said Flora. Oh, yes, said Mr. So-and-so. I'm against it in any form. I keep my salt and pepper in bowls, and when I'm scared, I prefer to tremble. It's far more dramatic. When I'm scared, I bite my fingernails, said Flora. Mr. So-and-so examined the little fingers that wrapped around his hand. Repulsive habit, he said. Not to mention short-sighted. How are you supposed to pick wax out of your ear with short nails? Now, he said, ignoring the disgusted look on Flora's face, how about we introduce ourselves? My name is Mr. So-and-so. I am the proprietor of this fine establishment. And you are? Flora, said Flora, and this is Ewan. We keep our salt and pepper in shakers. Thank you for listening.